Hello, everybody, and welcome back for the second segment of the July 29th Trips and Traps. Andy Serling, Eric Dollar. A little more variety to this segment. We'll uh, start off on the grass. Actually, we'll take a look at Saginaw in the sixth race from uh, Saturday. It's an allowance optional claimer. Saginaw, the three horse here. Yeah, looking forward to betting against the three Saginaw. His next start, he might break a step slowly, an easy horse to follow in those orange silks for the current, I believe, leading trainer, at least when we're filming this, Chad Brown, who has four wins with four maidens at this meet. Saginaw was trying the turf for the first time, coming off a layoff. There's no reason he couldn't improve second time out, and he did have some trouble in this race, but in my opinion, overall, he had a pretty good trip, and I think he's going to be way over bet next I thought time. so, too. He's going to have a little trouble here, actually, going around the first turn of Saginaw, sitting, uh, I guess, fourth right now uh, on the rail, going to run into a little bit of traffic trouble. Steady's there, maybe loses a length or so there, but really has plenty of time to settle back into a good rhythm. Yeah, it, 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 horses are going to have some trouble, and, and he did have some trouble in there, but overall, he's in a very, very good spot, and it's also worth noting the winner of this race is the horse who's in front right now, and that's Spocity Fever. And he's okay, Spocity Fever, but with well, the point about him being up front is it wasn't a race that collapsed. So the fact that Saginaw is in the position he is is probably to his benefit. And the other thing is, I think behind Spocity Fever, you had a bunch of horses eventually that come together a little bit hungry towards the end. I'm not sure I really want anybody particularly out of this race. Another slight study there from Saginaw. I agree with you. I mean, Saginaw is a horse that probably gets a little over bet uh, next time out because of the trouble that he's going to have in here that I think is going to be you know slightly overrated. And also the fact that Chad Brown does so well up here. His horses, if he continues his run, are going to get bet. And any horse with an excuse and a trouble line is going to get even bet harder and be an underlay next time. The funny thing is that Chad was a trainer when he first started two years ago. And Chad's done very well. And, and, and you know, we're fans of Chad's. But we had a lot of fun with Chad because his horses were so routinely over bet. And there you see Saginaw just making that easy, sweet move out in the three path. Where is the horse's acceleration the stretch? And don't tell me all that other trouble is the whole reason this horse didn't have any finish, because I don't believe it. Chad's horse has been going off good prices lately. That bandwagon that was betting him early early on hasn't been around, but the way he's doing it this meet, it just can't last. His horses are as live as can be. Even Saginaw ran pretty well. He was a decent price near coming off the fence. I don't know how much he rates to move forward. I agree. I think uh, maybe you can consider him you know, if you're looking at speed figures, maybe you say he'll run a couple points higher, but is that really going to make a difference in a race next time out? Right. Now, you know, sometimes horses will run much better second off a layoff, but I tend to, and I think this is what Eric agrees with me on, look for horses that almost didn't run at all to maybe run better the second time. Saginaw, clearly, Chad had him ready to run well in this race. I mean, will he run better? I don't know. How much tighter is he going to have in this day and age of, of trainers wanting to run horses fresh and, and pointing for them to the best races off the layoff, second and third off the layoff, not really too, too strong an angle, I don't think, and, anymore. And Chad Brown worked for Bobby Frankel, a man who got his horses ready to win off layoffs. We will move back to the dirt for the rest of the races. And in fact, we're going to look at a two-year-old race, and we think there's a couple interesting ones coming out of this race. Yeah, take a look at the two, Santiva, who breaks from the inside, and also the one A Joe Van, who's in the blue silks uh, in between horses, also toward the back of the pack. This race was won by Wine Police, so far the most impressive uh, maiden winner, uh, I think, at Saratoga. And there's a look at uh, Santiva, who had some trouble negotiating that inside post. And we'll also take a look at Jovan. Uh, we can see it more clearly on the uh, head-on later on when we take a look at Jovan, who gets carried out in the turn. But these horses have a lot of running to do to catch up to Wine Police. Yeah, Wine Police is a star in the making. I mean, he's one of, one of, the, one of the big names going to the hopeful at the end of the meet. We'll see. Jovan was a first-time star for Todd Pletcher. Did take some money at 4-1. to one. When you consider that Wine Police paid just over $7 in here, 4-1 to one isn't that uh, long a price for a Todd Pletcher first-time star. Santiva took no money at 34 to 1. Santiva's the one that people will notice more because of the big run from way back. Yeah, Santiva's uh, getting just on the screen right now in, uh, in those red in their red and white cap uh, right there and uh, is going to make a move up the inside after the rider kind of hesitates actually a little bit. Joe Van toward the outside in the uh, turquoise cap and we'll roll it and see how these horses do throughout the rest of the stretch in here. Santiva puts in a huge run. You'll see right here Edgar Prado. Looks like he might want to try to angle out and try to find some room outside and then there's some traffic there so he ducks to the inside and comes with a very nice run for third here. Yes, while as the chart caller noted under light encouragement this rider did not abuse a Course. He was never getting better than third, right. so there was no reason to. It was an educational situation from there, considering the early trouble. And the chart caller, and I believe we've been using a new chart caller up here in Saratoga, Equibase has been using one, and DRF is doing a fine job covering these races. So I would take a look at the charts. Obviously, the trouble early 
better see than the head on. Santiva, you see a lot of the times horses breaking from an inside post, especially two-year-olds duck in without anything there next to them, and that's exactly what happened to Santiva. There's another thing to note about this, and you might want to watch it again. It's a good situation kind of of herding in that wine police with Sean Trumbridge man, he wants to get him towards the inside from the outside, and as he moves over from the start, I think he tightens the whole field up well, very subtly. And there goes Joe Van, who's uh, affected by a horse that gets out a little bit in green. You see Joe Van way out there. This is probably uh, about the seven path. Wasn't out there the whole turn, but you know, still having to lose that momentum and then having to you know kind of take back a little bit to get inside and save that ground. Definitely cost Joe Van a little bit. Joe Van will come uh, wide off the turn, going about the three path there around the, around the turn, and you see way back uh, toward the back is Santiva, who uh, has so much running to do in the race. But uh, I think two horses that you can expect them to move forward next time out. Yeah, no question about it. This was an eventful race, both in a positive way for the horse that won the race, but also some horses behind. We'll be hearing some things from horses coming out of this race. We've got one race left. It's a maiden race, but this one's actually for three-year-olds and up. It's older horses. Three-year-olds and up. We're taking a look at a, a couple of horses in here. Equestrio, uh, the four horse for, for uh, trainer Nick Zito, breaks a little bit uh, slowly there. And we'll also take a look at A.E. Pitt, who's going to you know, catch some attention off the trouble line that he'll have in the stretch. But we're a little leery of A.E. Pitt. I think we want Equestrio as the one we really want next time out. Right. These were the two favorites, and A.E. Pitt had run a very fast figure for trainer Phil Serpy, first time out, finishing second. And Phil Serpy's a trainer who doesn't have him ready for first, uh, first time out very often. So he was a very likely horse to run well, and he was brutal in here, to be honest. And he does have that trouble in the stretch, but we, we think, and we'll show it, that he was sort of tiring when it happened, and it was meaningless. Equestria was a disappointment for Nick Zito, a big one, after running well in his first start. I think he was compromised not only by his second straight slow start, but very subtly checking behind horses on the backstretch and just never being in any position to be in a factor in a race that was dominated towards the front end. And you see Equestrio there, barely with his head on the, on the screen toward the back of the pack. The rider looking for a spot to go, and you're right about the steady. It was very subtle. It's hard to see on the pan shot, and, and you can see it on the head on, but you don't get the depth perception that you'd quite do uh, on the pan shot. And there's a look at A.E. Pitt, who's going to have, uh, who's right outside the seven horse, going to have some trouble actually bump with the bump with the four horse Equestrio here uh, at the top of the stretch. Both horses going very wide, and uh, we'll stop it just to take a look at where they are now. Right, the white blinkers for A.E. Pitt, and you can focus on that if you watch it again. Outside, of course, Equestrio. The other thing I like is that Equestrio did continue on and run a little bit towards the end, as opposed to A.E. Pitt. And yes, he steadies in behind horses at that point, but so what? He, he, where was he going? He, he was stayed out going absolutely nowhere. Yeah, I don't think he was making any kind of significant run up to that point. And after the steady, he didn't make a significant run either. We'll take a look at the head on uh, on the backstretch here. We'll show uh, start off with the Questio just breaking slowly here. Yeah, he, he'll break slowly. I mean, maybe he brushes the gate. You see him bangs it actually mm -hmm. split second. And also, and it's hard to see, and you can see it a little bit in the pan. But there's no question in my mind that he does get steadied out behind horses. How much it cost him, I don't know. But it just continued his problems of trying to find position as the race developed, and he never. I I mean, he's just so far out of the race. Where is he going from here? It would have taken a miracle for him to win. I think Equestria will be okay. i give him one more shot. Look, A. Pitt can run. His first race was good. But I'm concerned about whether or not he's going to be even seen in the near future after this performance because he did not run a step. Interesting point on A.E. Pitt. Don't really know what, what's going to happen w with him off that race. I mean, I guess he'd get bet again off the strong debut and the trouble line in, in, in this race here. I guess you're probably looking at a shortish price on him. Do you want him off this kind of race, though, next time out? I don't want A.E. Pitt. I do want Equestrio. But you know what? You see what kind of prices they are, and that's how you make your final determinations. Once again, trips and traps at nairainc.com. We love to hear your feedback. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on up here at the spa. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.